Hi, Steve, temporarily offline, asked a few YouTubers to buy the Tiny Spectrum Analyzer and to see what videos they could come up with. Here's my video. Now, I do have to apologise, there is a bit of a bug with the audio during the first part of the video. I hope you'll bear with me and enjoy the video. So, sit back, relax. And don't forget to click the thumbs up and let me begin by saying hi my name is john amateur radio call sign m7 cpt welcome to amateur radio on the air i'm going to take you through some of the videos that everyone's probably already covered setting it up and stuff like that I've had some thoughts about it. I think it could be used to detect RFI and possibly even Fox on TV. My license doesn't permit me to set up a, a beacon, so if I can't find someone with, that is licensed for a beacon, I'll just have to set up for tracking down some RFI. There's got to be plenty around here. Noise floor's high enough. This telescopic aerial is not going to be do very much for tracking down RFI. I doubt if it's directional at all. So the first thing I'm going to have to do is to make an antenna I can use for direction finding. Two types of antenna that I can use. There's a Yagi, which is the most directional antenna. The option that I have gone for is a loop antenna. I'm going to make a loop out of some RG213 coax, which is a 90 centimetre length. In order, in order to make it into a loop, I'll need plugs and a T connector. These two plugs will actually be connected to the coax forming the loop. First things first, I need to bear the end off one of the coaxes. Might have made this a bit long, but Good. Solder on the end there, so all in place. So the other end out. This and the coax, the center pin should not actually be connected for this particular aerial. In order to ensure that doesn't happen, I'm going to put some hot glue over the end. I'm using colored hot glue so you can easily see it. You can see if it comes out of place. And I think I'll also drop some inside the actual plug itself as well. Before my uh, gun gets itself up to temperature, pause the video. Put the inner core right all the way back as far as I can. And pop it on the end. Also made sure the braid wasn't touching the inner wire. This end doesn't need any solder on the this part. So 
can't put any in the gap because again there's no braid visible in the gap so i'll just leave it like that The sender, however, does need a spot solder. I've also put a little bit of heat shrink just to tidy up the last section, which is I need to cut a two centimeter gap in the braid at the midway point. Measure that to so look at the right spot. Two centimeters there. I put a bit of heat shrink on it that's rather tight for a reason. That's the reason. Just uh, that now. There we go. Right the outer, outer braid. Good chair. So we've got the inner core to solder on one, and the other side stays this. Just stick out my solder now, I'll get that. Doesn't need much solder in there. One other antenna I've had recommended, um, just in case the signals too strong to pick up with the the other aerial. Is this uh, RF sniffer? Uh, it simply returns a one millimeter enamel wire. Uh, you wrap it around a three and a half millimeter former. And at one end to the center core, and the other end you connect to the braid. I'm going to squeeze the uh, shrink up a bit. Wires are still separate, so the uh, heat shrink hasn't squeezed the wires together. I've left a tiny bit of copper visible at the top, but none of that's going to matter because do I have to take this and place it inside some conduit, what a male should do, and uh, show you what it, what it looks like when I finished it. Here we go, the conduit. Uh, I've taped up one end so it won't get uh, water into it, and I've just left the other end open. So everything gets in there nice and easy. And for the actual wand, simply just 
push it into the tube all the way. Obviously once you've attached your uh, jump lead. In order to help hide some of the plugs, this one at least, possibly a little bit of the, uh, any connections that uh, go into it, you can drop a conduit joiner onto it so no one can actually tell it looks like a CB plug. As for the uh, loop antenna, again I've used the 20mm conduit which is just right to cut a slot in the top so you can drop in at the midway point where you bared off the braid. Covered it in uh, black tape and again at the midway point I've also covered that in black tape with just the connection for your jump lead. At the bottom end of the pole I've put some tape on it which I'm going to cover over with some captain tape because it's nice rubbery grip. So I've got a nice grip. I've also got uh, a good length of conduit so I can get the aerial as far away from me as possible so that I don't interfere with the actual signal. As with all loop antennas, the signal is literally all the way around, but there is a complete dead spot in the sensor that travels in both directions. Now, to use this to track anything down, you're looking for that dead spot to give you the line to triangulate where it is you're going. You will have to triangulate rather than point and keep going at the strongest signal like, like you would with a Yagi. But this will suffice and do the job rather nicely. Unfortunately, as you can see, if you look at the windows, it's dark out, so you won't be able to see it if I'm actually filming at night. So what I'm going to have to do is wait until tomorrow. I'll go out in the local area and see if I can track down any RFI sources. Hopefully I won't get too many all over the place, but we shall see. One eternity later. I've just spent an entire week walking around my estate with the tiny SA and the directional antenna, tracking down any possible sources of RFI. There are a number of boilers in on the estate that were given off rather bad signals. I reported it to the uh, people living in the houses. It turns out that they, the boilers they were using were supplied by a landlord, so they've reported them to the landlord showing a potential fault. Other than that, still can't be certain because there may be considerable RFI being generated by the new street lights that we have which are LED street lights. In addition to this there are a number of solar panels around the estate that seem to be RF quiet which was quite surprising. Also I did mention about the possibility of using it on fox hunts. Now, unfortunately, I was not able to find someone that could provide a beacon for me to track down. However, I was able to pick up almost every amateur radio station on the estate that was transmitting while I was out and about. I'm not going to show any of that footage either because it's not my place to give away other people's addresses or even focus the vicinity down beyond where they wish it to be known. But for an example, let me show you what I did actually find within my own shack. Okay, I'm running some FT8 so you can have a reference signal. This one's on the 7 megahertz range, the 40 meter band. So this little signal down on this side is my radio and my transmission. 
all the way over this side, you'll notice there's another peak, just there. That one is at the 48 megahertz range, and it's used for clock oscillators. Also, you'll notice there's quite a large and broad section here, from here all the way across here, and some a little bit further over. So I've got all this noise, and down here, there's a smaller one that seems to be something else. Now then, let me just rotate the antenna so I can see. Yeah, this small one does actually seem to practically disappear, and the null line is pretty much in line with the boiler. I will be speaking to them about that to see if they'll let me do uh, some actual uh, checks with the, the sniffer to see if it is coming from the boiler. But if you notice when I turn the antenna, this one does change. Still turning the antenna. Again, that seems to be coming from the direction of their boiler. This section from here upwards doesn't appear to be well, it doesn't appear as though I can actually remove it by rotating the antenna. I can adjust it, but whilst it's getting the interference from the boiler, it's hard to actually pin down to what frequencies it's actually focused on. But the main, the two main ones is this one and this one especially that I'll have to do a bit more investigation to track down. As you've just seen, it can be used to track down radio signals on a known frequency. It can also be used to track down RFI from almost anywhere within the range. I look forward to seeing what the other YouTubers come up with. Uh, I'm sure they'll, there's a lot to uh, explore with the possibilities of this thing. I'll be looking further into it as well to see if I can come up with any more videos for you. So be sure to like the video, don't forget to subscribe and all that other YouTube stuff. Really lets me know that I'm doing what you want to see. All that leaves me to say is catch you on the air.